sweet is when a press is running smooth. My name is Jay Robinson. And I've been running a multi-1250 for about 10 years. My father, Pat Robinson, has been in the printing business for 30 years. What's frustrating is when the press doesn't run smoothly and a repairman isn't available. So three of us got together, myself, Pat, and Lee Gabbert, a self-employed serviceman for many years, and decided to make a video to help other operators to find themselves in the same situation. Hello, my name is Horace Lee Gabbert. I own a printing repair company called Multi Offset Service in Portland, Oregon. My friend here, Jay, has allowed us to use his 1250 to show you some of the adjustments. You'll notice that we've removed the safety covers for the viewing. Also, the machine is unplugged. Be sure you unplug the machine before you make these adjustments. Let's start with the ink fountain. What you want to do is have the amount of ink you're taking off with your printed copy being replaced. You don't want great amounts coming up into your ink system. It needs to mill it down, break that ink down a little bit. So put your knob in about a mid-range here, about four clicks up. So you're, you're turning here a pretty good click. Then turn your keys, adjust your keys. Let that flow be smooth. Now let me remove this for you so we can see better. Let's move into the ink ductor first. I'll show you how to adjust it. I'm going to remove the ink fountain so you can see a little bit better. Now, the pressure on your ink ductor is when it comes forward to the geared distributor, the one underneath this roll here. It's spring-loaded coming back, so your adjustment is forward. This adjustment is achieved by loosening the nut here and turning the eccentric. See how that just turns around? And you can feel, put your hand on that ink ductor, you can feel it when it makes a good firm contact. Let me remove this distributor roll so you can see in there a little bit better. See how the firm pressure after our adjustment, we've got a good firm pressure from the ductor roll hitting the idler roll here. Let me show you how to check where on your ink idlers. This one's a hard rubber one, so we don't have to show you that. What you want to do is take these rollers out, hold them up to the light, and see if there's light in between them. There's, you can't cut them down, so they have to be replaced if either there's light at the ends, so I can hold that for you, out here or in the middle. Replace them. Your ink can't flow if the rollers aren't in contact with the other ones. Let's move next into adjusting your ink form roll. We're going to do side play leveling it and overall pressure. So let me put this, these rolls back in here and we're going to ink it up and we'll show you how a stripe looks good and how the stripe when it's bad. This time, I want to show you glaze, too. On your hard rubber rolls, you don't want them shiny. You can see this one's starting to get shiny. That's glaze. So you take some glaze remover and get that shininess off of there. It won't carry the ink well when you're glazed. I like these big oscillators. They help mill your ink down. They're called jumbo oscillators. Your serviceman or or your parts store will have these. They really work good. Okay, let's mount this plate on here. 
and stay out of your way so you can see. What we're going to do here is make a stripe across this plate. We're going to show you, first of all, a good stripe, and then we'll throw it out and show you what, what you'd be adjusted if you had a bad one. So, okay, turn your knobs down if you're single lever machine. Just put, it, put your knobs down, put it in the ink position, and then take it off. See as you come around here. Now, you see here, these are just a little bit wide. You want one-eighth to three-sixteenth stripe here. Let's see how the other one, yeah, it's a little wide. So you can see here how it's heavy over on this side here. So we're gonna have to level that bottom form roll. To lighten your pressure, you loosen the set screw here in the knob. You turn the shaft in the knob here to the left would make it heavier, to the right would make it lighter. So we're gonna take and lighten up this one. So we loosen up the set screw. So I put a different set screw in there. Loosen up the set screw. I don't know what you got in there. There we go. Okay, loosen the set screw. Turn it to the right just a little bit. Lock it down. Make another stripe here. And you'll see here we have a 1 8 to 3 16 stripe. So we're good on our top form roll. Let's take and lighten the bottom form roll pressure also. We're a little heavy there. So go to the right just a little bit, lock it down, make another stripe on your plate, come around and, okay. We're just a little bit too light, so I'm going to heavy it up just a little bit. Remember, one-eighth to three-sixteenths. Go, make another stripe. There we go. Now, we're out of level, but our stripe is one-eighth to three-sixteenths over here. Now we're going to level it and take out this wideness over here on this side. Let me move around to the other side of the machine and we'll show you your eccentric adjustment here. To level the ink form rolls, you loosen the screw here, turn your eccentric here. At the same time, press in on it. It takes the side play out of your ink rolls. You don't want side play, it makes streaks and it wears out your plate. So keep it pressed in. Tighten your screw back down. Now we know that our bottom form roll is out from our stripe. So we're gonna loosen the screw, turn your bushing here counterclockwise to increase, clockwise to decrease. So we need to go to the right just a little bit to get that level. Lock your screw back down. Okay, now let's move around to the other side and make another stripe. Turn it around. Turn your handles down, bring her around, and you'll see here we've got a good level stripe. Okay, now keep in mind, if you're heavy over here on the side opposite the operator, you adjust it with the eccentrics. Overall pressure, that's all the way across there, is adjusted with the knob over on the operator's side. That's it. Let's move to the water section now. I'm going to remove these rollers so you can see a little bit better. You know, we're going to start here with the water fountain roll. See here, see that slop in there? That could cause the water to splash out. It causes a problem because this ductor roll is traveling back and forth here. See here? See how that's just moving back and forth? So when this ductor roll comes up and hits here, and it makes the water splash out if you have slop in your roll like that. So let's remove it, and I'll show you a quick way of fixing it, kind of a temporary way. Remove your roller. 
and take and place some cotton in the ends of the roller and that'll take out that slop that you have here. So just take just a little piece of cotton here and place it over the ends like that. You don't want to hang it down like here because it tends to throw. So keep her tight in there. Then place it back onto your pins and you'll notice that there won't be any slop. We'll just slip this one side in for you. There. Now you see how that slop's gone. So you want to keep the slop out of your fountain roll. Keep it clean. You can see this one's getting pretty inky. Take a wire brush or a stiff brush and keep those clean. If it's a smooth fountain roller, just keep it wiped off so it'll carry that water. Next, we'll move. Now, I'm going to show you what happens. Sometimes this knob is really hard to turn your fountain roll. What happens is that the fountain solution in here, let me get this out of our way here. Move that water bottle. What happens is the fountain solution gets up in this bushing and it gums it up. Well, I'm going to show you how to take this apart. You turn it around till there's screw here in the collar. Take that screw out. Move your screw. You can remove the collar at that time. See how that pulls right off of there now? Okay. Let me move around to this side to press here. And what we're going to take loose is this screw and the nut here. So you loosen the nut on the back side here. Undo your screw. There. See that just drops down. See how that popped right out of there? Okay. What you want, what's making this gummy and hard to turn is this brown stuff that's on this uh, shaft here. So take something like a bright pad or steel wool or something, clean that stuff off of there. At the same time, look at the end of the pin down here. That slop in the water fountain roll was caused by this being worn. To replace this shaft, all you have to do is remove this screw right here, the one that's right here in your ratchet. So just remove that screw and this whole pin will slide right out. When you go to put it back in, put some grease on it. Shove her back in. Replace your arm here. Put your screw back in. Come around and put your collar and screw back in on the other side. So it's really fairly simple to do. But keep that grease in there and you won't have the problem with the driving. That's all there is to that. This is the adjustments for the old style, or three lever multi. I want you to pay particular attention to the slop and the wear here. This would create you problems by this slop here, and over here, if you can see this bar here, where it goes into the ductor arms. Check there, you don't want any wear there either. So what happens is this ductor system comes up and it'll hit your oscillator that's sitting here, so it hits that side and then it equalizes on the other side. This is all happening pretty fast. So if you've got a lot of play, it truly can't equalize fast enough. So pay close attention to this wear in here, particularly so if you have a coverless system. That's where you don't have the covers on here. The rollers are a little bit bigger. I might add, you can't just take these covers off and run the rollers bare. They have to be coverless rollers. Okay, the adjustment on this old style is right out here. And what we're going to adjust is the pressure as this ductor comes forward to the oscillator, the pressure against that oscillator. What we want is a good firm pressure so we have good contact. Coming back to the fountain roller is spring loaded. So there's no adjustment coming to the, for, uh, to the fountain roller. Now I'm going to remove this gear here so you can see our adjustment a little easier.
this is your adjustment here. It's eccentric. You loosen the nut on the back side, turn the screw till you have a firm pressure coming forward to the oscillator. Lock it down and you'll be just fine. So remember, firm pressure coming forward to the oscillator. On the old style, it's adjusted out here on the end. Now, when you replace this gear back on here, you'll notice the cam here. What this cam is designed for is to bring your ductor system back to the fountain roll when it's ratcheting, so that your, water, your fountain roller is turning here, your ductor rolls up against it. So place your cam back on there so that it's in time, so when your ductor comes back to your fountain roll and it ratchets. Now, one more thing we want to show you here, get this back in, is timing of the ductor roll to where it hits your oscillator, at the time it hits your oscillator. So what I'm saying is, when this comes forward and hits the oscillator, it creates a little action like that. And so I'm going to show you how to time it. I'm going to put these back in so you can see a little bit better of what I'm trying to tell you here. Okay, it comes forward, hits the oscillator here. At that time, you would want the opening of your cylinder underneath your roll. Otherwise, you can create a streak mark. So, in order to change it, you loosen the screws here in the casting. There's one here and there's one right down this hole here. Lift it up a little bit, time it so that your ductor roll hits the oscillator when you're in the opening of the cylinder here. And that's all there is to that. Next, we're going to adjust the pressure on your water form roll, the big one right here. Let me move around to the other side and show you a few things here. I'm going to remove these so you can see a little bit better. First, I want you to take this roller and shake it up and down. See that play there? You can't hold a good pressure with that much play there. I'll show you what to check here. Check your shaft for wear here, and also the brass bushing that the shaft fits into here. Take it and shake the shaft up and down in that bushing. See, there's just barely any place. So the wear is in the roller. If you had wear in the brass bushing here, to replace it, you simply loosen the screw on the other end of it and one right along the casting here. And this whole unit will slide out towards you. So let's go into the adjustments of the roller now. Now people, you could either use a sheet of 20 pound stock or film. A lot of people prefer film. Stick your strips in there and pull on them. See how there's no pressure over there right now. And so what we want to do is adjust from the middle here over to here first. We do that with the knob adjustment here. What to do here is loosen the set screw here, turn the shaft to the left to increase. It's just like you're turning on the knob more. So left to increase. Pull on your strip. See how we're getting pressure there now? So you want a good firm pressure. Not too heavy. Too heavy will cause it to come into the opening here and it comes up and hits the lead edge of your cylinder and causes this action like that. So it gives you a scuffing action. So you want just a, a firm pressure to make sure you're down onto the plate cylinder. Next, you move to this side. Now we're going to level the roller, and that's from the center to the left, towards you, towards the operator. So we stick our strip in there. We're pretty light on this side, so we're going to level it. Loosen the set screw right here. Take this whole piece here. See how that turns. As you go towards the left, you increase the pressure. So you're 
turning that whole knob, the whole assembly is turning. So you feel it, you get a good pressure there. Lock her down. Check it again for a good firm pressure there. This adjustment here also takes the side play out. Now I'll loosen her up here and I'll show you. See, you got play there. Again, it's going to wear on your plate. It's going to make streaks. So you loosen the set screw here, push in that whole assembly. See how that pushes in? And it takes out the side plate. Be careful because you're also you're going to throw yourself out of level. So take your side play out, lock her back down, again check for level. This 7 16 nut here and the screw in the middle of it is just a snubber. All it does is make your handle click. You want a good solid click so that when this comes around, hits that lead edge, that it don't, doesn't bounce you off. So, uh, let me find a knob here and I'll give you a little better idea. All it is is a little ball inside here with a spring and it goes into these indentations. That's all it does. And that takes care of leveling your water form roll. Okay, let me show you the two adjustments on your water oscillator roll. Get it over here. Okay, right here you'll see this little set screw right there. That, when you loosen that up, that takes the side play out. You don't want it real wobbly in there. The other adjustment on it is your hold down clamp. Some don't have this. Uh, certain styles of rollers don't use the hold downs. If you have them, what you're achieving is just so that it doesn't bounce. You don't want it down real tight because it'll create a squeegee action here. So just enough to keep that roller from bouncing around on you. Now, if this roller sticks on you, doesn't turn, what you do is take the end with the collar, and there's a brass screw right here. Take that screw out, and inside here is a bushing to here. Push this whole shaft of bushing out. There'll be a dog and a cam screw in there. Grease them up every so often. I'd go like, oh, every three months I check and make sure. When you place it back together, be sure and put a coating of grease on this bushing that's sliding in and out here. That'll take care of you with your oscillator. Same thing applies with your ink oscillators too. They got that same dog and cam screw affair in them. So replace or put grease in them also. Let's put that right back in there. There you go, see no side play there. Water fountain roll, duck the roller back in. Water fountain roll. And lock her down. There, you're all done with your water fountain system. Let's move over here to the single lever press, the new style. I'm going to show you how to adjust the ductor on it. First of all, let me get this out of our way. You remove your fountain roll and the fountain. Just lift it up and over here out of your way. Okay, um, what we're going to adjust is the action of this ductor system coming forward to hit the oscillator here. To do this, we loosen the nut on the back of the center support. Loosen that up. Yeah, see, now we're free here. At the same time, make sure that these clips are on the side of the center support. It must be in the middle. Make sure these clips here are there. Okay, now let's put our oscillator back on. Let's 
and our ductor roll back in. Rotate the press around until the throw is forward to the oscillator. Place your finger on the ductor roll, hold it a little pressure against it there. Tighten down the nut again. See, we got good firm pressure. Put your fountain roll back in now. Roll it around until the ductor roll comes back to the fountain roll. Now, I didn't get that bar thrown at the right time. There we go. Little pressure to hold it good and firm. Tighten the nut down. There we go. Fountain roll back in. Roll the press around until the ductor roll comes up to the fountain roller. Now, on this new style, you want equal amount of pressure from the fountain roller to the ductor roller and the same pressure when it throws forward to the oscillator. So you want to just get it right in the middle so you've got the same pressure coming back to the fountain roller going forward to the oscillator. This is the yoke session. This is what holds the unit on. First of all, make sure your screws are tight. These have a tendency to work loose all the time. Next, we'll move to how close your unit is to the casting here. Take a sheet of 20 pound paper and place between the water unit and the casting here. What we're accomplishing here is we're gonna bring this down, but we don't want it down too tight and create a bind. Put it in the water position. See here, we're just about right there, but I'll show you how to adjust it here. Place your operating lever in the moist position. Now, the adjustment here is just 7 16 nut right here. Loosen your nut, turn your eccentric. See that whole unit pull down. Pull her down to where you can just pull out that sheet of 20 pound. Lock her down and try it again. See, it moved on me. It tightened up. Too tight. Lock her down. Try her again. Now, this adjustment is the same on the other side of the press. On the gear side, the same adjustment. One other thing I want you to check. It's this support bar right here. This keeps the water unit from twisting on you. So you must have this in place. And that takes care of the single lever water unit. Let's move back over here to the three lever press we're going to discuss now is the master cylinder here. You've had times when it's been really hard to move that image up and down when you loosen up the bolt. What you want to do, take and run some hot water between the gear and the cylinder. Just dribble a little hot water down here. The hot water will break the fountain solution. That's what's in there, fountain solution. Oil won't cut that. So just some hot water. In extreme cases, use some liquid hand cleaner. Let's move over to the other side and I'll show you how to take out the side play if this cylinder is moving sideways on you. That's accomplished right here. You have two screws. The outside screw holds the inside one from turning. It's a lock screw. Loosen up the outside one like this. Turn your inside one. Turn it to the right, and what you're doing is pushing the bushing up to the cylinder closer. Be careful with that inside screw. It's a very small screw, and it'll snap off on you. So very gently turn it in. Lock your lock screw back down. Check for side play. 
And that's all there is to that. I'm going to show you how to replace the margin bolt, the one that you adjust the up and down margin on the cylinder. Bring her around to the bottom hole down here, and you can see it in there. Take your T-wrench, loosen her up. Be very careful when you go to pull out the bolt. There's a washer on the end of it, and you'll drop it if you're not real careful. There we go. Now, this has an old-style washer on it. It's not the thick brass one. These tend to get cupped so that dish so it won't hold against that cylinder well. Turn it over when you go to replace, put in the new bolt. Turn that washer over. Take her and put her back in your T-wrench like that and hope you hit the hole. There you go. of all, let's deal with side play. See that side play there? This would cause you double images and wear out your plates. To remove the side play, take off the grease cover here. You see our screw and washer here. Before tightening down the screw to take out the side play, remove the screw. The washer behind it tends to get cupped. Gets a dished effect to it. So take it out, turn the washer over. It gives you a little bit more play with it. Then put your screw back in Tighten it down firmly. Like so. Then replace your grease cover. Let's move around here and look at the cam band. That's this thin piece of metal here between the gear and the cylinder. Right here, see the little high spot here. What this cam band does, tells your upper feed roll when to come in, to take your paper into the head. To adjust, the cam band, or let me first say, to know if you need to adjust the cam band, if you have to run an awful lot of feed roll pressure, what you would want to do is come around to the side and loosen up the three screws out here on the outside the gear. There's holes here for you to get to those screws. Loosen them up. Make a scratch line across your gear and your cylinder so you've got a reference point to move it back to in case you're wrong. As you move this cam band down, you need less feed roll pressure. Let me show you on a cylinder here. This is the impression cylinder, and this is where that sheet's going to end up. Here are stops on the impression cylinder. If you we're running back from those stops when that sheet runs in there, sitting back here. You would want to loosen the screws on the cam band, I'll show you, and move the cam band down, come down with it. And what that does is going to pull that sheet in up to the stops here. If you're laying over the top of your grippers, like that, half of them are over, then you'd want to move the cam band up that would bring your sheet back. Okay, to adjust the cam band, you loosen up the three screws outside your gear here. There's holes in the casting to get to them. Loosen them up. Make a scratch line here first. So you've got a reference point. Scratch all the way across to your cylinder. That way you can always move it back to where you were if you get confused. Okay, so loosen up your set your screws out here, move your cam band, lock it back down. Run your sheet in, and that should take care of that. Again, 
a lot of feed roll pressure, you need to move your cam band down. If you're running real light feed roll pressure, then you want to move the cam band back. That takes care of your cam band. Now we're going to go into gripper margin. That's the amount of paper that's underneath the grippers on the impression cylinder. I'll show you again here. That is this area that's underneath these grippers. You can't print there. Factory specs say 5 16 gripper margin. We can swing that cylinder to get you a quarter inch gripper margin. The only effect that you'll get sometimes is a little bend in your stock like that. This is caused by coming over the sharp edge here when you're trying to achieve the quarter inch gripper margin. So you just, you're bending over this area here. So that's gripper margin for you. To adjust gripper margin, loosen up the nut here on the inside of the cylinder. Loosen the three screws out here and swing your cylinder. This whole cylinder will swing free of the gear. So you move it just a little bit. Tighten it down the screws. Tighten down your nut. At this time, you may have to adjust the cam band again if it's moved on you. One other thing in the blanket cylinder, make sure the pilot screw here is tight. On some blanket cylinders, you'll want to shake them up and down. See if there's any play on that shaft. It should be tight. Ink up a plate. Make a stripe across to your blanket. If you're wide here, narrow here, and at the other end it reverses itself and it's wide here and narrow here, you have a bad shaft or cylinder and that would have to be replaced. I've, I would have a professional do it. It gets pretty tricky sometimes. Tightness of your blanket. Too loose, you'll get double images because the blanket shifts with that paper. Too tight, you see these bars here? They'll cause pull lines. Clear up here into your cylinder. See, it'll just go like that. So you want just a good resilient touch to it. When you put on a new blanket, tighten her down, run 50 sheets, tighten it down again. Moving over here to the single lever, it's a little clearer for you to see. This is the pear-shaped cam. Its timing is lighting the point up with the lead edge of the blanket, right here where your blanket bends over the blanket cylinder here. So point in it right there. You get too far forward, and you'll print on the back of your sheet. You'll get a little printing line there. If you get too far backwards, you'll print on the tail of the sheet. So line up this point with the lead edge of the blanket cylinder, right where it bends over there. To adjust it, just loosen the grease fitting here, and this will move around. Be careful when you do that you don't squash this brass part behind it. You don't break it. Make sure it's out of your way. Let's go into leveling of the master cylinder to the blanket cylinder. Let's make a stripe across our blanket to see if we're level. Put it in a print position, take it off, bring it around here. You see we're thicker over on this side, on the operator side, than we are over here on the non-operator side. The adjustment for that is located right here. There's one on each side on the new style. Loosen up the lock nut turn the big nut behind it to the right. Lock down your nut, bring it around, make another stripe, and just see here, let me get you a little clearer stripe there. There you go, I've got it just a hair too much now. Okay, too much, so I want to go to the left to lighten. Lock her down, make a stripe. You'll see here we're, we're level now. We're almost level. Lighten her up a little bit more. Lock her down. 
There we go. Now we're running just a wee bit thick on our ink stripe here. So we're gonna take and lighten that up. And all you do, loosen that nut and just move the collar behind it. See how that moves? That's your pressure adjustment there. See, it's moving our whole head in and out. Lock her down, make a stripe, one eighth to three sixteenths thick. And there's your stripe, good level stripe. Let's swing over here to the old style three lever machine. Your leveling is done right here with this turnbuckle. Loosen the nuts here and here, and as you turn down this turnbuckle, this would create your level pressures. That's all there is, that's the only difference, just turning that turnbuckle to become level. And that takes care of that one for you. I'm gonna come around here, I'm gonna show you on this impression cylinder that's out of the machine. First of all, we're gonna adjust for the opening of the grippers here on the cylinder. They open to a distance of 5 sixteenths. You're going to be looking at this from the rear of the press, so when they're all the way open, 5 sixteenths is your margin. Now to adjust these, this gripper here is your master gripper. It's got a little washer down inside here on this shaft to keep it from going open too wide. So if you need to open them wider, just take and loosen the nut down here at the base of the grippers, and you can open them, or if you want to close them. The closing of them is spring pressure. See, they're spring-loaded here. What you want to do is take a sheet, stick it underneath your grippers here, and pull. See how we got one holding and the rest aren't. So you would loosen them up, press down on them, and then lock them down again. Make sure that you don't slide these grippers over and where they catch on the stops here. That takes care of the gripper opening and gripper pressure against your sheet. Spring loaded closed, 5 sixteenths open when it all the way open. Let's go into leveling of the impression cylinder now. Let's move over here to the gear side of the press. This is your leveling adjustment here. First of all, there's a slot here in the brass bushing. That sets at approximately 10 o'clock to start with. Now, to level, you loosen the screw up here in the segment, and as you go to the left, you increase the pressure from the center of the cylinder to the gear side. So loosen the screw, turn it to the left to increase the pressure from the center to the gear side of the press. Lock down your screw. Now we'll move over here to the single lever. This is your overall adjustment here. Loosen the lock nut Turn your knurled screw here. It has raise and lower on it. It has R and L. Get your pressure. Generally, the nut will sit just about where this one is, just a little bit right of center. Lock her down. Now, we'll move back over to the small press, and I'll show you how to get a stripe to see if you're level. Let's move back around here to the operator's side. I'm going to ink up the plate. Put our operating handle down, ink up the blanket. Just like that. Take a sheet of paper, roll it into the press. Make sure you're underneath it. Take your impression cylinder adjustment here, push down on it, and unlock your trip arm here. Roll her about a half inch. Push down on your impression cylinder trip and back down again. Now, we come back here and you'll see we made a stripe here. Now we're level 
If we were out of level over here on the gear side to press, we would have made our level adjustment. Let's set the trip mechanism that trips your impression cylinder on. I'm going to remove the upper feed roll frame here so you can see the trip finger better. You loosen the set screws here in the casting. Roll your hand wheel around until your arm is up out of your way so you can get to the pin that's going through right here. Push your pin through, lower down, grab the elevating frame and push towards the gear side. Just push it on over there. There you go. We're just right out. This is your impression trip here. The paper must hit this impression trip in order to trip the cylinder. That's why you feed envelopes down this side, unless you've got a special trip that they make as an attachment over here. This is your trip adjustment here. You can see how it pushes forward. As the paper hits the trip finger on the feed rolls, it throws this forward and locks up your impression cylinder. Now the adjustments here are really simple. People have quite a bit of problem with it, so I'll be as clear as I can. You want the this piece here and the top of this arm here, there should be an eighth of an inch gap between the bottom of the flat spot here and the top of this arm here. Eighth of an inch gap. You, what it does is gives you clearance so when there's not paper going through, it's got enough clearance so it'll allow itself to fall off. The next adjustment is the throw of the arm here. We want to, when we come in and the paper trips the arm, it's going to throw into where you have an eighth of an inch between the back side of this arm and the round piece here. So you're going to come in to an eighth of an inch here. Really simple. You get in too close, you're going to stay latched too far away, you're not going to latch when the paper goes in. This adjustment is all made by this screw right here, a little tiny screw and nut. That's just that cr lets it throw, creates the throw to it. This L-shaped bracket here just gives this piece something to rest against so it's not too far out. Let me bring her around here again, and you'll see we're an eighth of an inch from the big round piece here. See that? And that's caused by this adjustment here. So you'll be working between this adjustment and this screw and nut. Again, if you're too far out with your screw, this will stay locked up and you'll be on impression all the time. Too far in and you won't get any impression trip. And that's all there is to that. You do it a couple of times, you'll find out it's not as tricky as what you think it is. That takes care of your trip adjustment. Let's move up here to the stop fingers. That's these little critters right there. What happens is the paper comes up and hits against those, and that gives it a, a steady point for it to rest against before it starts through the cylinders. You want to make sure these are straight. If one's sticking out, then that sheet doesn't have a flat surface to come to, and you'll get this type of effect. Register problems would be a great problem or nicking. So I'm going to show you here. I'm going to take them out. So you just take out these three screws here on this plate. Also, at this time, we're going to remove this tape roller to make it easier to come out. So just pull the screw out of the end bearing, and it'll slip right out.
Let's see. There we go. There. All right. Grab the plate, push down on the stop finger arm over here. Push them down. Roll your plate right out. To remove the stop fingers, it's a set screw right here. Undo that set screw, pull this pin out, and this whole apparatus will shift over for you. Um, now, this one's got a screw in it. An older style has screws, but loosen the screw or the set screw. Pull the pin towards you. Wow, since this one's been out. There we go. There you are. Push down on your stop fingers, pull them towards you. Just roll them right on up and out, just like that. And you take them over and lay them on a flat surface. This is the part that you're going to want to be flat here. So they'll bend real easy. So very gently, if you have to bend one back or forth, gently bend it. Try to stay off of this surface here. You, want, you don't want it scarred up because paper will catch on it. Okay. To put them back in when you're done, take your spring here, wind it around two times. Hold on to it and roll your stop fingers back into the press. Just like that. Now I lost it here as you see, so I'm going to come up from the bottom, wind this spring two times around, and place it underneath that casting. Take the non-operator side and put your pin back into the bushing. Just slide her right back into there. Take your left side pin, press it all the way in. Good tight fit there. Take and make sure you don't have any side play here. Just kind of grab your fingers and make sure there's no side play. Lock down your screw. Check again for side play. No side play. There, you're all set. See how those are? They just snap right back up there now. While we're in this section, have it open. Check for side play in your lower feed roll. Should have just a little bit of play in there. You've got a lot of side play. Come over to the side, right outside here, and tap that bushing in. Just gently tap it in, and that'll take out any side play you'd have. Now we're gonna replace this back in the press. First of all, I want you to check that there's no side play here in your upper feed roll. If you do have side play there, loosen the screw here and just push in on that bearing right there. Just push that pin in. Okay, nothing to it. Now, put this piece in. We want to stay to this side of the press here, with this piece here. So we take it, keep it over to us, over against it. Okay, hook your spring on the stud there. Keep keeping this over towards you as to that casting. Take and Push your bearing in on the non-operator's side. Your pin here, push it through the hole. Be careful when you're pushing it through that hole that you don't come too far out the casting. This arm will catch on it. Lock down your set screws. Make sure there's no side play in it. Now we're going to adjust the level of the feed rolls. That's done right here. You loosen the lock screw. Make sure your oil hole here is on the left. Now as you turn this bushing to the right, you increase pressure from the center to the operator's side. From the center to the operator's side. So you turn it to the right to increase the pressure. Again, make sure that this oil hole is on your left. 
take two strips of paper, get it out of the way, roll them into your feed rolls, one on each side. and pull back. See, we've got a pretty firm pressure there and a firm pressure here. Now, if this one was light, you would adjust down here, turning the slot to the right. Then lock her down. Test again. Good even pressure on both sides, same pressure. That's your leveling adjustment. This is your feed roll adjustment. This causes your paper to come in further. Would, say if you had register, up and down register problems, you would want to turn this to the left a little bit to increase more pressure. So left to increase, right to decrease pressure. This screw down here is your stop finger adjustment. You loosen the little nut, turn the screw to the right to lower the stop fingers. When the stop fingers are correctly set, when they're at their lowest travel, the tops of them will be just below this plate here. Lock down your nut here on your screw, and you're all done with your feed roll pressure. Let's start with the ejector unit now. These rings here slip back and forth. If you have a curled stock that you want to run that stock so it will curl up this way, you run this ejector roll on the inside of the roll. Vice versa, if you want the curl to come down, you'd run it on the outside of the ring. So all these are for is just to curl your stock coming out. Now up in here is your ejector roll bar. Now not much to it, there's uh, little spring clips in there that hold these from sliding sideways. Usually they don't last very long. I use a piece of hose on either side of the bar to keep them from slipping, and that way you can move the hose a lot easier. Those little pins are generally sticky or they're loose. So just put a little hose on each side of that ejector roll up at the top there. That takes care of your ejector system. move right down here to the speed control. You notice you have a set screw here, and there's another one on down. It's hard to film it so you'll see, but there's another set screw right here. There, maybe you can see that, but it's right there. You've got two set screws. You loosen these, if, and to bring your speed up, you would loosen them and pull up on this whole mechanism here. And what it does is bring your motor up higher. If you're running at high speeds and you notice a lot of slipping then probably you're too high here and it needs to go down a little bit so just loosen the two set screws on the arm here and that controls your speed let me grab a variable speed control here and i'll show you how it works this is a variable speed control this is what's on your motor so when this raises up and you're going faster this pulley comes in together so that the belt travels on the outside of the pulley. When you're going slower and this is down, it spreads that pulley apart and rides down on the inside of the pulley. That's how your variable speed pulley works. Sometimes they get a little gummy. So usually a little water in them or a little oil right down in the middle there. Just a little drop of oil. That takes care of your speed pulleys. We're going to clean the clutch now. What happens when the clutch is dirty, your hand wheel will stick and you'll be turning the feeder with it. Or else it starts out real slow and it's racing and nothing's happening. So nine times out of ten you have oil in the clutch here. To remove the clutch, some have lock screws. The newer style are, is just a screw in here. This one has that, so we'll loosen that, back out the screw. Pull on the clutch face here, just like that. 
Now your oil will be in here on the surfaces in here and also on the four weights here. Those weights are held on by a spring. Wipe these weights off also. Now when you go to replace the clutch back onto here, you'll notice there's a cutout section here on one side. That cutout section faces in and goes around this ring. So the cutout goes towards the pulley. Just pull her right back on there like that. Place your clutch cover back on and replace your screw. Now be careful screwing these screws in because you're talking about just old pot metal here and it'll strip out on you. So get it tight, but don't really reef on it because you'll strip out this clutch cover here. Lock down your screw and you've just cleaned the clutch. Let's make the conveyor board adjustments now. now that's done by right here with this cam. See how this cam makes your jogger move in as it comes up on the high point. You want it to be just past the high point here, just a little past there, be just when the sheet's starting to go in. So we roll it around, get up on our high point, and the sheet travels in. The idea being you want it to just have jogged before the sheet starts in. Otherwise, if you're still jogging, then you're gonna mess up your sheet here. So just loosen these two screws here, bring your feed rolls together just when they first touch, then just past the high point on your jogger cam here. Okay, what we wanna do, we don't wanna move this whole sheet very far. If this was a, oh, a real weak sheet, not much body to it, what would happen is you're jogging it over and it will tend to want to buckle. So when you jog, jog only a sixteenth of an inch over. Just move that sheet over so you have control. That's all you want to do. When you push it into the register springs here, some people prefer to run without the register springs. That's the two springs here. When you come into those two springs, just depress them about a sixteenth of an inch. You want a same press into those springs every time that sheet comes in. Now on your tapes here, I run four retainer strips here rather than the usual two. It tends, when you're moving this sheet around, it holds that sheet a little flatter. Move your sheet up to your stop fingers, set your skid wheel here right off the tail end of the sheet. Don't have it on it. If you have it on it, it's going to tend to drive your sheet up like that and cause you nicks. Too far back on a high speed press, the sheet comes up and it's going so fast it hits your stop fingers and bounces back. So this is a guide to hold it from bouncing back. Another thing here you want to watch is the tension of your conveyor tapes. See how nice and tight those are? You get one that's running loose, well your sheet is going to come up here and it's going to follow the tight one. So you're going to get a twisting effect with that sheet. So make sure you've got good tight conveyor tapes. Also, it's necessary for them to be fairly new so that they grip that sheet as it's coming through. So keep an eye on your conveyor tapes there. Now let's move on back to the feeder. Feeder section, let's start right here at the very beginning. Make sure you've got a good flat support board for your paper stock. Otherwise, you can get this action and those sucker feet can't pick up the sheet. So let me get this out of our way. Let's go to your support bars here. These should be placed underneath the suction feet. It's for the suction feet can come down on top of them. Be very careful when you're placing these or running cardstock or something that these don't come up against this backstop. That's what breaks this pin right over here. It'll snap off that taper pin. So be very careful when you're setting up that the opening is here. OK, 
Okay, we go into the side guides here. Put some paper back in here. There. You want freedom of your sheet back here. Don't be too tight because you're going to create a bind for the sucker feet to grab it. Same thing on your side guides here. You've got to have a little space there. Let me get this paper out of the way now and we'll show you a couple other things here. These guides here, you want about, oh, a sixteenth of an inch between your paper and the side of this guide here. Again, just so you're not binding the sheet. If you have, this is the old style, so it, it locks down on the bottom, it's got a lock screw. On the new style, you'll have a screw with a nut behind it here, and that's what creates the pressure so that this won't slide around on you. It's eccentric, so you loosen the nut behind it, so you can turn the screw a little bit, and the nut in the back of it is eccentric. So just turn it, what it does is just pull a bar up against this bar. Lock her down, make sure you don't have any play, throw your lever up, make sure you can slide it evenly, push down on the lever, and it locks into place. Now let's move right on up to your sheet separators here. When you're running 20 pound stock, ordinarily the stock will run right at the bottom of this cut. Then what you do is flutter the sheet on up from there. Let me pull this out. Now, the sheet separator here, the little brass piece here, you want about a quarter of an inch sticking out so that it's not sticking too far out to bother the sheet. You want it going up so it's not curled down holding your sheet. So make sure you're not sticking out too far. Place it underneath the sucker feet, just like that. This bar can give you a little tilt here. You put a wrench on it, say if you're laying back when you're at the top. Let me get a hold of that thing for you. It's mounted by screws on either side, but you've got enough play here that you can tilt this bar in and out so you get a good flat surface here for the paper to rest again. So if it's sitting that way, just grab a hold of it with a wrench and twist her up straight like that. Blowers. You want to float a sheet, just kind of a little float to it, and have a separation of seven to ten sheets. Let me put this paper back in here and I'll, you can see a little bit better. Okay, we're going to come right to the bottom of those cuts. We're going to turn, we're going to hit the blowers, make this sheet float up like that. Not too much blower or else you, your sheet will get this kind of action. You, you won't have any control of it. So just float the sheet gently up like that. Okay, to control the height when you're running automatically. Let me remove this thing so see better. This adjustment here controls the height of the stack automatically. It's got raise and lower down here on the back of it. As you come out this way, it lets that stack come to a higher level. It's all controlled by the bail bar here. So, heavier stock, Better come up just a little bit higher than it would with the 20 pound. Run this bar, your bail bar, all the way back. What you're doing is you want that bail bar off of that sheet before the sucker feet start to rise. So see how we just start up there? We're off that sheet and the sucker feet now will start and pick it up and pull it in. So it's really critical that this be back out of the way. One other thing I want to show you with this end piece here while we're here is if you have rear mounted blowers back here, watch the hose that comes off of these blowers. It can interfere with this bail bar. 
The bail bar will hit the hose rather than the paper. So pay close attention to that. Positioning of your sucker feet. Some people like to run their rubber pull-out rolls on the inside of the sucker feet. These fellas here like them on the outside. But just so that they're evenly spaced on your sheet and your rolls are right up close to them, right like that. And that's just the position of them. There's nothing more to that. Feed roll pressure. That's how you want just a medium pressure here. So you've got firm contact there to control your sheet. This is adjusted by the knob here. Some are screw slots, some are knobs like this. As you go to the right, you lighten the pressure here. So turn her down, get a good firm pressure. Not too heavy. So you can just get her around there. There you go. Be sure and keep oil on this bushing inside of here. Don't let these go dry on. Just a little spot of oil here when you oil your press. That's your pressure adjustment for your feed roll. Let's adjust your double sheet eliminator. That's adjusted by here. It has raise and lower on the top here. And by here, this little nut and screw. This nut and screw sensitizes this adjustment. What there is in here is a switch. So when your double sheet hit, it pulls up the arm and causes the gate to open. Okay, loosen up the screw here, the nut. Turn on your vacuum. Turn your screw in. Till your double sheet gate opens. Turn her in, back her off just till the gate closes. Lock her down. Then take and set, set it with your two strips of paper underneath your roller here by using the adjustment up here. Take your strip in here, fold it back from the lead edge here. Okay, it goes under one sheet, hits the second sheet, and opens the gate. That's all there is to set in your double sheet gate. Let's adjust the height and the throw of the sucker feet now. By height, we mean from the bottom of the sucker foot to the knurled roll. We need height in there so you don't trap the paper in between the two. That's adjusted by this screw here and this screw here. This screw adjusts the throw. You can see here, as you screw this screw down, it throws the feet further forward. This screw controls the height of the feet and also some of the throw for it. To adjust this screw here, it's eccentric. You loosen up the little 5 16 nut on the back, Take your high point of your eccentric. That'd be the high point. See how it makes that start turning and lifting. The high point will point straight back towards this point right here. The high point straight back. As you turn it to the right, it throws the rollers in further and also controls the height. See how it's making this arm move up and down. That's your height control. This is control for when you Put your paper underneath the rubber rolls here, and we'll show you how that goes and how to break that. Height control here, the throw of the sucker feet here. The adjustment I'm going to show you now is when the vacuum breaks and remakes. What we're going to achieve is placing the sheet between this rubber roller here and the knurled roller down here. We turn on the vacuum here and we'll pull a sheet in. Comes down, picks it up, brings her up, feeds in between the rollers. Now you want that to feed underneath this roller. You want just a tiny buckle right here. Your object is to get the paper so that you are sure underneath these rollers. You got good control of your sheet. 
to make this adjustment, roll this down out of your way. This adjustment here breaks your vacuum. You roll that around, you'll see. Okay, you come down, pick up the sheet, feed it into the nip of the rollers. When you're underneath there, then this piece here will hit here and break your vacuum. This is important that you want to break the vacuum with that tiny little buckle here so that you're not holding the sheet with your sucker feet all at the same time you're trying to pull it with the rollers. So you must break that vacuum. Bring the sheet up between the rollers, break the vacuum here. This is done by loosening the nut here and turning this screw in. You want to break a little sooner, out if you want a little later. You get too late with it, again, your rollers are trying to pull it, your sucker feet have it. Too early, you're not into the rollers and the sheet's starting to twist on you. Then we'll come back here to the remake of the vacuum. One thing I want to keep clear, when this throws, see that little latch mechanism there? This is going to push this arm enough to cause it to latch. Then your, sheet, your feet are going to come back down to pick up another sheet. Just about three quarters of an inch before it comes down on the sheet, we remake vacuum here. This is the old style here. You remake vacuum, see, and it cuts off this last. Let me get you, watch this arm. See how that? You remake vacuum, you're ready for another sheet. That's all there is to making and breaking your vacuum. I want to show you this sprocket here. Behind this sprocket is a stop screw to stop this chain from jumping the sprocket. These get busted off fairly often. What will happen here is your feed table will be sitting at an angle like that. So replace those stop screws. They're from the inside of the casting right behind the sprocket here. Great big heavy screws. That'll straighten out your feed table for you. We're going to adjust the new style here now. There's only one adjustment on the new style. That's the throw of the tubes. The adjustment between the height of the tube on the new style and the knurled roll here is adjusted by loosening the set screw here and just moving your tube up and down. You want about an eighth of an inch clearance what you're after is not to trap the sheet between the sucker foot and the knurled roll. Move over here and I'll show you how to adjust the throw of the sucker feet. Loosen that set screw. See how right here, see how that kicks those back and forth. Generally, you press it all the way down, lock in your set screw here, Lock her down tight. And again, you're after putting that sheet underneath the pull-out rolls here and the neural roll. That's what this adjustment for is, to throw those feet forward to get the sheet underneath the rollers here. There's one other adjustment on a new style that differs from the old style. Now, your vacuum brake here is the same. Use the screw to break the vacuum. Vacuum remake is here. Again, you want it, those tubes to come down just before they get down to the sheet. This swings back and releases your lever to make your vacuum. That is locked in, swings back. Let me turn the hand wheel around for you. Watch right here. See it break? And break just before they get down. That adjustment is made right here. Take your Allen wrench and its position of this pin right here tells that spring, tells it when to pull back on it. You want a sooner vacuum, you move it to the left. A later vacuum remake, you move it to the right. 
we, we're a little soon now since I moved it. We'll put her right about there. Okay, here she comes forward to break the vacuum. Now the feet are gonna start back down now. And just before they get to the stack, it's gonna release the vacuum. That's all there is to this new style vacuum remake adjustment. Let's move back over here to the old press here. What we're gonna do is show you the adjustments on the raising of the feeder. I'm gonna take off this handle and the gears here so you can see it a bit better. Kind of difficult to see. Okay, let's take off this gear. Just unscrew the screw and it'll slide right off the shaft. Take the keeper off of here and the washer. And this arm and this gear here will slide out together. There you go. Now, I'm going to also take off this piece here, this pawl. Now, the adjustment we're showing you is when this arm, the base of it, comes around here. Get her in there so you can see. It would be a little difficult to see here. Let me pull this back. Okay. Now, the distance you're going to adjust is the bottom of the arm here and this piece right here. Okay, so you're getting your gap here. To get this gap, loosen the nut on the back side of this bolt here. This is an eccentric bolt. Loosen it and turn this bolt, and this will turn this piece here to give you this action. Now you can do this if your gears are all on there. If you had a load of 70, 80 pound stock, this is going to narrow that gap. So give yourself a pretty good gap here. You get it too wide, you won't be able to throw off your handle to roll it down. So, okay, you got that gap. This would control the raising of the stack. If you're not getting enough gap here to release that, then your stack won't come up. You get too much gap, then your chances are your stack will just keep coming up and it won't stop. So check this gap here if you're having trouble with your stack raising. Before I put this piece back on again, I want to show you the action of the adjustment to kick this piece so it would kick loose. That's made right here. Just loosen the nut, turn the screw, and there's a big round piece behind there, and all it does is just press against here. You turn it so you got enough distance so it clears the pawl here. Real simple, you'll see how that works, there's nothing to it. Next, let's put this spring, the little spring, back on that stud there. That's what holds the pressure down to raise your stack. With the big spring, I like to run the spring right here. Sometimes the people will hook the spring into here. It's just to cause more of a pulling down action on the pole here. Let's place it back on. Slide it all the way in so you're even. Hook your spring here. Next, we'll go to the lifting mechanism here. This is your release lever. Push it back to lower the table. This one is made by Press Specialties. It's a little bit different. On a standard AM release lever, you don't have this pawl in the back. I like these because of what it does. It, the pawl drops down into this section here, and it won't let you backslide. So if your table is trying to raise and it's going backwards, pick yourself up one of these from a Press Specialties dealer. That'll drop right into there, just like that. See, this is cranking around, and it stops it from backsliding on you. Let's slide this back on now to the shaft. 
gear. Sometimes you have to work them around a little bit to get them slide on. Put your washer back on there and your keeper on top. Next comes the gear out here. Tighten your screw down. Replace your crank handle here. Tighten her down. And you're in business. Okay. Let's move over here to the vacuum pump. I've set one out here so you can see it a little bit clearer. This would be your vacuum side is on the right. Blower side is on the left. When you're cleaning these, we're gonna show you how to clean it first of all. Take this section here off and run something through there. Take your jar off, wipe out the dust, take your screen off, here, remove the holders, unroll it, and be sure and clean the brass screen in the middle. I have a lot of people blow these off, but they never get down to this screen here, and it'll be plugged. So unroll it and clean it. Next, unscrew this part that the bottle was in. These holes here, your vacuum comes in this tube here, through these holes, you want to clean these out. They get all paper dust in them. Come up to this hole in the middle. The vacuum then goes through your screen, through this middle hole, and through here and into your pump here. Also, watch this elbow here. Clean in here. Next, would we'll go right over here to the blower side. What we do is take and put a piece of cotton in the blower side. That's to absorb any oil that comes through the pump and out the blower so it doesn't blow on your paper. Flushing a pump. Be very careful when you flush a pump. Don't use a solvent that's too hot, too high a flash point. Make sure your pump is cool. Don't do it when it's hot. The way I generally do it is take the bottle loose from the tube here and squirt it directly into your pump. Inside this pump is four veins. This spins around and these veins drop down. As it comes around this way, they drop out, create vacuum, come around to here and create a blower as they're falling back into their slots. So when your pump is stuck, it's those veins that are stuck in there. Sometimes when I'm putting a solution in there to clean it, I'll tap it a little bit if they're really stuck. Now that solution is going to come out here and go into this blower jar here. So be sure you've got a rag over your blower tube here. Just put a rag there so it doesn't blow you and get you in the face. Type of oil to use, vacuum pump oil. Do not use a heavyweight oil. It gums up those veins that are trying to slide in and out of their slots here. So make sure you have a 10 weight vacuum oil in here. Very critical. Right in this brass section here is a hole. I don't think we can get it to turn around. This hole goes all the way through. What it is is that wick in there comes up and into here so it collects air and oil when it's feeding into the pump. So that's really about all you have with your pump. Be careful again when you're flushing it. Don't let it be too hot or use too hot a solvents. Let me show you something else here too. Check your pulleys when they're on here. Check the set screws on them, on both the pump and the motor. They come loose a lot. So make sure your set screws are tight on your pulleys that are driving this pump. chain delivery section. First of all, we're going to show you the gap here. See this piece? That's right on your roller arm here. You want this 
piece to come up against the bar, not heavy, but just up against there. What it controls is the opening of the grippers to receive the sheet and also to drop the sheet. This is very important. If you've got one bar that keeps dropping them short or nicks the sheet, check the bars for right here to begin with. Make sure your bar here is against this bar here. Let's adjust the grippers on the bar now. What happens if you've got one tight, three loose, or vice versa, is it causes sheet to twist when it's dropping. Take a sheet of paper, into here, put it underneath your grippers, like so, and pull back on your sheet. See how this one over here is loose? That would cause the sheet to twist. To adjust this, there's a nut, a Allen head bolt right back here on the back. Loosen up that Allen head and press down on the gripper. Not too hard, because you'll get it too tight and the rest will be loose. Lock the screw back down. Pull again on your paper here. And we can go a little bit tighter with it. Be careful when you're tightening these screws down. It's pot metal. And it'll, it'll, you'll break the gripper off. Okay, so now we got her. Just barely reach underneath your sheet here to your arm, your roller arm right here. And barely open up those grippers and pull on that sheet and you'll feel if you've got a tight one anywhere you'll feel that it's dragging your sheet as you're pulling it out now if you've got some grippers sticking over the edge here it just means that they got bent and you'll have to replace them the adjustment for how tight your grippers close is right here at the end of the spring just loosen the set screw in the collar and turn it to the right. That winds that spring tighter. And you're all set for your gripper adjustment. Just fast and easy, nothing to it. You do it a few times, it'll come really easy to you. Next, let's move to chain tension. You want about an inch play in that chain. Now on a, on a AM chain, it's not spring loaded, so these chains tends to stretch on you. Keep them well oiled. Like on a Friday, take and oil them heavily, and that way the oil will penetrate and you can wipe them off Monday. Be sure and oil them. They'll snap right off on you if you don't. Let's move up now to the adjustment to the cylinder. Let's move into the adjustments here of the gripper bar in relationship where it comes into the opening of the cylinder here. If you're too high with that bar, you're gonna nick the sheet as those grippers are swinging in to pick up the sheet. Too low, you won't get enough of the sheet to pull it out well. You've got just about, oh, I'd say about uh, 64, 30 second between the cylinder and the top of the bar here. If you're too high, you'll know it. To adjust height and lowering, there's three set screws here. Loosen them up and this whole bar will swing up and down. To straighten it, you have, it's all pinned. I've had them where they bent the pins in the shaft here, right in, in the sprockets on the ends here. So you have to drive out that pin and put a straight pin in. Your cam here is to tell the grippers when to close. You want the grippers on the chain here to close before the grippers open on the cylinder here. That's all adjusted right here. Just loosen up those nuts and this thing will swing back and forth. I'm gonna show you how to tighten the chain if it was loose. You loosen the nut here. Come around to this half inch bolt right down here. As you turn this bolt in to the right, you're gonna pull this whole section out that would tighten up your chain. So loosen up your nut here, turn this bolt to the right to tighten the chain. You want about, a, about an inch slot in the chain. That's just all you have to do to tighten it. If you have to move your gripper bar into the cylinder, say if you're in too close and you're nicking the sheet, that adjustment is made here and here. You loosen up 
these two nuts here and turn it a nut right here. Loosen the nut, turn the nut in here. One on each side. Can't go wrong. So this would move your gripper bar in and out of the cylinder. Don't get it in too far. Your chain will run against the cylinder and mark it up. So do it by hand and make sure that you're free when you do it. Lock your nuts back down, you're all set. Next, I want to show you the deflector here. I've had these spread in here from people tighten them too hard, and it spreads out and it puts this surface too close to the cylinder. So make sure it's not this that spread instead of your chain having to go further into the cylinder or further away. This turnbuckle here adjusts the side throw of the side jogger, how far it throws in and out. To adjust it, loosen the nuts here, turn your turnbuckle here, and you'll see the throw on the side jogger shorten down or widen out as you're adjusting here. That's all there is to that. Now, I can't show you the action on the rear jogger. What you do is follow the bars back off your jogger back here underneath the press right about here. There'll be a cam up in there. Some have bolts, some have set screws. As you turn that cam, it tells your jogger when to come in and out. So if your jogger's in, when that sheet drops, turn that cam around so that the jogger is out, the sheet drops, then the jogger comes in. So the cams are right up underneath here. This is a press specialties type chain delivery. On the adjustments on it, you make here for your roller here. This is the roller that's going to open the grippers. You want to get a good opening, but not open too soon and hit your paper. So make sure these are all adjusted to approximately the same space between the bottom of this bar and this roller here. So when it comes around, hits the cam, they're all going to open at the same time. It makes your sheet drop nice down in the stack, too. To adjust it, loosen the set screw here, and this whole piece will swing up and down. Lock her back down. The grippers on some are adjustable, some aren't. Some you have to bend. These particular ones are adjustable, and they have a set screw right here. Loosen it up, take your sheet, place it underneath the grippers, and pull gently. As you're pulling it out, you'll feel if you've got one too tight or one loose one. See how that pulled real even, pulled right out of there. So we're adjusted well there. Moving up into the cylinder here, we come across here, we're going to adjust the height of the gripper bar coming into the cylinder here. Now you get this bar too high when it comes into the opening. You're going to nick the sheets as the grippers open. Too low, you won't get enough of the sheet to have control to bring it on out. This is adjusted by three nuts here on the side. Loosen them up. This whole bar here will swing up and down. You can get your adjustment there. The moving of the bar into the cylinder to get the sheet is controlled by these nuts right here, one on each side. Loosen these bolts, turn this screw that way, turn it to the right to push that bar further in to the left to bring it out. Be careful, you get it in too far the chain here will nick the cylinder. So make sure that you're not that far in. Take a little piece of cardboard and run back through here. Make sure that chain's not running against the cylinder here. To level the gripper bar here, the sprocket on this side has two set screws in it. Loosen the set screws and the sprocket will move on the shaft. Now this is only on a press specialties chain delivery. Really handy. 
to moving back to here to tighten your chain. They were pretty good here. This adjustment here tightens your chain. You want about an inch, inch and a half play here. If it's real sloppy and loose, just turn this bolt in and that will tighten the chain and move this bar back. One on each side. Let's move here to this cam here. This cam tells the bar when to open. See how that roller comes riding around on there. So this is pretty much pretty close where you're going to want it. Why that's at an angle here is so that this roller, when you're backing up your chain, will follow the cam. Gives it somewhere to open. If this cam arm here is down too far, it's going to come and hit there and you're going to won't be able to turn it backwards anymore. See how that made it bind up? The arm would be too far down, hit the cam, and it causes a bind. So watch your adjustment of your arm here. It has to be closed enough to back it up over this cam here. Jogger action is controlled by a cam up underneath the machine. That would be your rear jogger and your side jogger. It's located right back up underneath this area. Open your door and look up in there. You'll see a cam in there like that. It could have a bolt on it or could have a set screw. As you turn that cam, it makes the timing of the joggers later or earlier. So if your jogger's up there and it's the sheet's dropping, it's still in the way, move your cam back, lock her down, and then the jogger will come in later for the sheet. This adjustment here, they have it disconnected. They use this for an envelope press. This adjustment right here, there'll be a bolt here. This tells the stacker when to start stacking with your lever here. Start with between two and four clicks up. Then you should start your downward movement with your stacker. It's all adjusted by the Allen screw that's going to be sitting right into this section here, and this will be behind that just like that. And that's for the lowering of your stacker. It just tells this when to start operating. And there we are, done with the chain delivery, press special. This is your adjustments here for the feeder these set screws, you loosen them up here to adjust it. When you want to adjust it, your sheet is going to travel from your feeder up to the stop fingers. Hesitate just a second and then go in. To get this section, your adjustment is made here. Loosen the set screw here and the set screw here. You want that sheet to come up a little faster to have that moment hesitation move it to the right. If it's coming up and hesitating too long, like on 11 by 17 paper and it overlaps, move it to the left a little bit until you get that moment hesitation. Nothing to it. You'll, you'll find it simple. Let's move over here to the old press. I'll show you the oil holes on it. What we really want you to do, if there's any moving parts, put some oil on them. This is the operator's side of the press, the ink unit. You can see there the arrows. Oil, anything, again, that moves. See the arrows there? Now, that one on the right, I mean for you to oil behind that operating handle. There's a bushing there. Okay. Let's move here. See where the... You'll see the moving parts. Be sure and oil that hand wheel, too. Now, you won't have this part here if you have a chain delivery. But at the same time, I want you to be aware of the linkage underneath the press. Okay, this is the impression cylinder and the trip. Put a little oil. See that arrow in the middle? That's for the lower feed roll. Jogger. These are the jogger parts. Again, metal to metal. Put some oil. This is the feeder section. See that? Sure, you can see the rollers rolling. 
Turn it over by hand. You'll see it operate. I want you to oil behind those gears, too. There's a couple of oil holes right in that middle gear, right down behind it. You'll see them. Feeder section. Not too much oil in that arm on the right, because it'll throw on your paper if you get too much. It's the bail bar. And that arrow down on the right, there's a brass bushing down there. Just a little bit of oil. That's right where your sprockets are. This is your trip and make vacuum section. A little bit of oil. Watch that sprocket in the middle. Make sure that that chain is tight enough to drive that middle sprocket. Oil the bearings behind those sprockets. This is the right side of your press. See the bushings there? One's for the lower feed roll and one's for your stop fingers. Okay, this is for your speed pulley. Just put a little oil down that tube and it'll go right into that pulley. Just a little bit. We come back up to the linkage that controls between the ink head and the blanket cylinder. This is very important here. This is the inking unit. Be sure and keep oil on that part on the right hand side. water unit. There'll be oil holes there for you to see. Keep it on that arm on the right. This is very important. Everybody forgets this one. That's the gear that drives the ink unit. It's on the night latch sha shaft. Doctor unit. There's a little spring out there on the right. Keep some oil on those springs. Those are the brass bushings on your ink fountain. Just a little drop of oil there. That's the roll that we adjusted for your ink unit to adjust the ductor roller. Very important here. Keep some oil on those springs on the right hand side, right in the middle of the cylinder. You keep some oil on them, they won't break on you. up to the water unit. Oil keeps the fountain solution off. That's what you're after. It'll last twice as long if you keep some oil on that water unit. See there? Little bit of oil, and it'll save you a lot of time, a lot of money. Shafts, ink shafts, and the water shaft. Keep some oil or grease on those shafts. These are the grease fittings on either end of the cylinder, on your impression cylinder and your blanket cylinder. They're both on each end. On the master cylinder, which I'm going to show you right there, they're right inside the cylinder, one on each side. Just a little bit of grease. Do it more often than a lot at one time. That's on the right-hand side of the blanket cylinder, on the non-operator side. See, that's greasing easy. That's your impression cylinder. Some on the old style are inside the cylinder. The new style is out there on the right-hand side. There you go, right there. That's the old style, right inside the cylinder. There. Now we've greased it, we've oiled it, we've made the adjustments. As you make these adjustments more and more, you'll get used to doing it. So don't be afraid to do it. If you have a problem, go back to your videotape. You'll pick it right up. I hope we've saved you some money.